everybody. I'm so happy that you're here today. My name is Catherine Underhill, and I am the executive director here at VIEW. And this is the greatest thing, because this is really what VIEW is here for. So, so happy that you can be here, and we're so happy that the chorus is here as well. Let's give them a round of applause. You can I have heard them rehearse, as you may have as well, and they sound fantastic, so this is going to be a big treat for everybody. Speaking of treats, be sure that you stay after and enjoy the treats that have been um, donated to this beautiful group and, you know, meet and greet and chat with the people who are singing. That's a treat as well. Um, I did want to let you know that the galleries are open if you'd like to enjoy them after the concert. We'll be happy to give you that opportunity. There's a lot of great work. This happens to be our Central Adirondack show and two others. So you'll see a lot of local and regional artists on view as well. So please take advantage of that too. Um, I also wanted to mention that I have understood that there may be a power outage, because why not? And, <laughs> and um, the good news is, you is well equipped with a generator. So if there's a momentary pause in lighting, just don't worry, and the generator will kick on, and as if by magic, we will all proceed, OK? Um, we also, I just wanted to make sure that you know our membership team is here as well. Wanted to thank them. Sorry, thank those volunteers for being with us. And uh, please stop by the table if you're interested in discussing membership with them. With that, please join me in welcoming the Old Forge Community Chorus for this afternoon's concert. Thank you. Oh, 
Shifting gears now, oh dear, what can the matter be, also known as Johnny So Long Affair, is a traditional nursery rhyme that can be traced back as far as the 1770s in England. It made its way across the Atlantic shortly after American independence. There are several variations on its lyrics. We hope you enjoy this arrangement.
Our next selection is a traditional funeral dance from Gotland, Sweden, and written to a traditional Polish melody. It was first recorded in 1912 by August Freddy in the collection Gottlandtoner for the widow Nyman in Burgs. In listening to the lyrics, one would guess her husband's name was Martin. However, they'd be wrong. His name, his name was Nils Petter Larsen. So I can't say with confidence that Martin and Nils were on good terms. <laughs> the lyrics reflect joyous celebration of life and translate as follows. Today, Martin will be buried. Forward to the late tables. Oh, what gladness and oh, what joy. Can we get pepper and pretzels? Then we'll get brandy and bread rolls. It does not matter. Only the soul is satisfied. There's nobody Swedish in the audience, is there? <laughs>
Catechin Farewell is a waltz in D major composed in the style of a Scottish lament by the American folk musician Jay Unger in 1982. This composition also has a very local connection for us, as for many years it served as a good night or farewell waltz at the annual Ashokan Fiddle and Dance Camps run by Unger and his wife at the Ashokan Field campus of SUNY New Paltz, now the Ashokan Center in upstate New York. Ashokan was the name of a former village in the Catskill region that is now mostly covered by the Ashokan Reservoir.
journey continues with a trio of songs arranged by Jamaican musicologist Marjorie Wiley. Miss Wiley says, and I quote, Jamaican folk songs are full of social commentary, censure, and recrimination in a vehicle of humor. They often touch on areas which are almost taboo in the normal circumstances of polite everyday speech, and at other times provide humorous relief in times of adversity. She continues, the importance of traditional J Jamaican folk songs today is mainly historical, since most of the lyrical content refers to events and relationships which give insight into the human condition of the past and the not so distant past. The first song in this trio is Train of Blow, which playfully describes a comical scene at a station where there is a departing train bound for three popular Jamaican towns. Mr. Tom is running to catch the train, followed by Miss Mary, whose feet are skinny. Mother Jane carries a chicken that is trying to fly away. And another woman is attempting to hide her son in a large kerosene barrel, hoping she won't have to pay his fare. <laughs>
<coughs> Little Brown Jug was a drinking song written in 1869 by Joseph Eastburn Winner and published in Philadelphia. Aside from encouraging alcoholism, it has remained well known <laughs> as a folk song into the 20th century, and it enjoyed new popularity during the Prohibition era. <coughs>
ballad folk song associated with colonial and later music in the Appalachian Mountains. It is believed to have originated in Scotland as it refers, refers to the River Clyde in the lyrics. American musicologist Alan Lomax supported the thesis of Scottish origin, saying that the song was an American, quote, remake of British material.
and around the world in your song. Um, on your way out to refreshments, you'll find a basket at the door if you'd like to make a donation.